buy this shirt. I went to a smart high school. It's uh, Troy High School in Fullerton, California. It's known for being first in the National Science Olympiad competition for quite some time. I think they're also shown in Mark Rober's YouTube video sometime. And so it's like a school that's known for being smart in science. The reason I knew this high school was a little bit different was because I had to test in to get into the high school. How this school worked was that it was a magnet school, which means that anyone in like different cities could get into this high school by taking a test and passing that test. The school was segregated into like three types of students. Normal students, which means that you live in the area and you could just, you just a normal public school, you just go there. Troy Tech students, which means that you have to fulfill these things. Like you have to go down one of these paths for engineering, cyber defense, computer science, whatever. You have to take these classes sometime within your four years. And then the third thing is Troy Tech plus IB. IB or International Baccalaureate, like the AP program for American students, IB is like the international version of that. You have to do like special classes like theory of knowledge class, an extended essay. Basically you have to fulfill these other requirements on top of the Troy Tech requirements. So yeah, that's the one that I did. So I realized quite early on that in the realm of smart students, I was like pretty average. I knew how to do homework and do like relatively well on quizzes and exams because the teacher would just say something and I would just absorb it and regurgitate, just like tell it back. But then when like projects started happening, that's where I realized that smart kids were really smart and I wasn't one of them. One of the projects was to create like a video game that was a partner project. I was like, I don't know how to make a video game. The teacher never taught us how to make a video game. But my partner was like, oh, I've experimented with game engines. I know how to make like a character move up and down. I know how to add, add like gravity and like realistic falling effects. And I was like, that's the difference between me and like the smart people because they're like passionate about computer science and they're willing to go outside of class, go look up how to make games and how to like figure this stuff out. Whereas for me, outside of class, I would learn how to make like this little transition on video on like Adobe Premiere. So I was like, I see where the differences are. And then I was like, I have to see how I can keep up with these people because I was like, I can't fall behind because colleges are gonna compare all these students together. So I just realized that if I'm not in like the smart tier, I can act like I am in the smart tier. So this is what I learned from hanging around smart people in this high school. Number one, it's all in the details. Smart people love to look and find the smallest details in something. For example, you're doing a group project on let's say Tesla cars, okay? A normal person would just Google Tesla cars and look at the history and Wikipedia and whatever. But what smart people do is that they go and look at Wikipedia and then they go a step further. They go and look at the founder. So they go look at Elon Musk and then they go further and see Elon Musk's history and see like different companies that he started beforehand. And then they learn more about Elon Musk so that way during the group presentation, it sounds like this person's super smart because they go further than just that like top layer of like, oh, this topic's gonna be about Tesla. They go further and they go like, this topic's gonna be about Tesla, the founder, previous experiments, failures, successes, their whole life story. And then so if you want to be smart, you gotta focus on details. The second thing is that smart people will always prepare. What I mean by that is like, for example, if you have an interview, right? And then the job interviewer says, this is just a conversation. There's nothing you have to prepare for it. We're just talking to kind of get to know you. For me, I'm like, okay, I'll just take their word for it. I'll just be like, all right, I won't prepare much. I'll just like talk to you when I talk to you. But smart people, what they do is they prepare. They find a way to prepare no matter what. They'll go and research the company, see a little bit of history about the company, and then also find like a list of questions that they can ask. So that way when they go into the job interview, they have things that show that they've been researching for the company and that this conversation is not just for them, just like a whatever conversation. This is something that they're interested in and they were motivated to go and search and do some research beforehand so that way they're prepared for this interview. This extends for everything. So like the teacher will tell us that like there's a test three weeks down the line. And for me, normally I'm like three weeks down the line, I don't know anything about this subject. I'll wait till like two weeks in to start studying because I don't know anything. 
but what a smart person would do, they'd read a little bit ahead and then they'd go ask the teacher some questions. Questions not only about the subject material, but about how the test is gonna be formatted so that way they can focus on the right things when they're studying. It also helps them develop like a relationship with the teacher so that way later on down the road, they could ask the teacher for like a letter of recommendation. This type of prep thing is what makes you smarter. Not necessarily that you're like smarter as in like you know stuff or you absorb stuff faster, but you proactively do things so that way you learn better and more efficiently. The third thing I learned from this was how to study. And that was super beneficial because when I went to college, it felt a lot easier than high school. So I had seven classes in high school, all packed into one day and each class had like its own tests and quizzes and projects and compare that to college where your classes are split throughout the week you don't have all your classes in every day you have some of your classes three times a week some of your classes two times a week it's a lot easier to manage your time because you have more time to study that was part of the reason why i wasn't so phased about transferring into computer science when i got into college because i was already going into college expecting to do the same amount of work if not more from high school and when college was a lot less, it just made it easier for me to focus on getting good grades. That was like one of the biggest things that I learned going to this high school. I just learned that you could do a lot more than you think. Like whenever I study, there's this point where you don't wanna study and then if you just ignore that for a bit, you kind of get into the groove of studying and then you just keep studying and keep studying until you get whatever work done. It's just like I learned how to enjoy studying and how to study efficiently. So would I recommend it? Yes and no. So I wouldn't recommend doing what I did, but I would recommend like challenging yourself in high school. If you can make high school pretty difficult so that way college is easy, that's like the goal. It really is the case where if you surround yourself with smarter people, you get smarter because you see what they do and you see how you can improve. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I learned from going to that high school. Like and subscribe, comment below your high school experience, see if it's different from mine, and buy my merch, breezylow.com. That's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.